Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Have you ever wondered how to add chromatic aberration into your video games? That's what we're going to be going over today, plus another fun, extra juicy effect. First of all, what is chromatic aberration? When people talk about chromatic aberration in video games, what they're talking about is this fringed effect that is caused by old CRT television. This is really good if you want to add a retro aesthetic to your video game. It works really great with pixel art games, but can be added to other things too. What I'm going to show you is a basic way of doing this. It's not the only way, and it's not the most efficient way, but it's a good way of doing it if you're going to be entering game jams, or if you just want to do something quick and dirty. So just a little warning before I get started, I will be going over the very basics of how Game Maker draws onto the screen. So if you already know all about the draw event, you can go ahead and skip to the chromatic aberration part. Just go to the timestamp that's on the screen. Let's get right into it. Um, here we see that we have uh, just a basic project. I have a basic character in there. Um, and I just have some basic movement set up, nothing really special. Um, so let's go ahead and run it and so you can see what's going on here. So I'm going to show you how to do this in Game Maker Studio 2 and 1.4. So you, you can see there that um, we just have some basic movement, some walls, uh, some enemies following around. And it's just pretty basic pixel art. Uh, nothing special going on. The edges are nice and crisp. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my object here, into my player object. And I'm going to create a new event, uh, what's uh, a draw event. So if you don't know what a draw event is, it's basically the command that tells Game Maker how to draw on the screen. So by default, it just takes a sprite um, and draws that um, at whatever X and Y coordinate. But we're going to override the default way of drawing so that we could draw a uh, chromatic aberration. It has a few drawing commands. Draw self is the most basic command. It basically just draws normally using whatever sprite you've assigned. So if we go into draw and we don't put anything into our draw command it, it's basically like telling it not to draw anything at all so if we run the game um, you'll see that because it doesn't have anything in there it, it's not going to draw our character um, everything else is the same though um, so even though you don't see it there you'll notice that the enemy still interacts with them because everything all the collisions and all the programming it's all working the same way so if we do, do um, put draw self on there, then you'll notice that it actually uh, draws normally. There's no change at all. So another basic function that's in there is a uh, draw sprite. So this is basically all it does is draws a sprite, uh, just like it says, draw sprite. And if you notice here at the bottom, you can see what arguments it takes. So the first argument that it's going to take is what sprite, so a sprite index. Um, we're just going to use uh, sprite index. Sprite index is the built-in variable, and it basically points at whatever sprite we've selected on the side there. Um, in this case, it's our green smiley guy, sprite player, SPR player. Um, and so whatever sprite you put in there is automatically saved into the variable sprite index. Uh, the next thing is the sub image. Image index is the other built-in variable and that'll take, um, that's basically image index is assigned the current frame of animation that you are on. So these are all different frames of animation here. Uh, there are four frames there so it just goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, and so if we just type in image index, it'll just animate normally. And then it takes the coordinates where you want it to draw it, and X and Y are our current X and Y coordinates. So we're just putting in all the built-in variables in here so that it'll draw our sprite normally, um, basically doing the same thing that draw self would be doing. 
Another basic function is draw sprite extended. And you'll notice down here that it gives us a whole bunch of new arguments that we could put into this. Um, the image X scale and the image Y scale, um, the image angle, right there it says rotation, rots for rotation. Um, image X scale is the current width, image Y scale is the current height, image angle is the current uh, angle in degrees. So if we just write image angle, that's the built-in variable, and it'll take our current angle in degrees. Image blend is sort of like the color that it's being drawn in. And then the last argument is the alpha, and we'll just use image alpha. And these are all the built-in variables. We could obviously replace any one of these arguments with our own variable if we wanted to. But for now, I just want to show you that how to access these built-in variables and um, just explain to you so you could see uh, how these arguments work. So that'll draw our sprite normally. Now we want to go ahead and draw in our chromatic aberration. I'm just going to label this so that we know what's going on and it just says dry, draw sprite normally when we haven't changed anything. It's good to comment your code even if it, you think it's really simple and easy to read uh, there will come a day when you go back and look at it and you will not know why that code is there or what that code is doing and then also you might want somebody else to look at your code and if it's not commented it's going to be a lot more difficult for them to figure out what's going on so I'm just gonna start off with some comments so that I get an idea of what it is I want to do um, it's a way of sketching out what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is change the blend mode. Um, then I'm going to draw my red channel and my blue channel. And then I have to reset my blend mode so that everything else draws normally. Whenever you do change your blend mode or your alpha um, or the color that you're drawing in, you want to reset everything back to normal or else the whole screen will be drawn in this way. So the old way, if you're using GameMaker 1.4, you want to use draw set blend mode. Um, that's different in Game Maker Studio 2. That has been changed to GPU set blend mode. Now, what a blend mode is, it's just uh, there are a few basic ways of drawing onto the screen. So, there are a few different ways of drawing onto the screen. And if you're unfamiliar, just uh, hit F1 or right click and go to the help file. And then it'll show you all the different types of blend modes. Uh, BM normal is the default way of drawing to the screen. BM add uh, makes the black parts uh, transparent in your image. BM subtract makes a negative. Um, BM max is sort of like BM add. Um, so it gives you a, a detailed description of each one. And if you click down here, it'll also give you a grid that shows you what all these different blend modes do. So you could do a BM extended and combine two different types of blend modes. And that's what this grid is. Um, notice that there is a warning there where uh, blend modes don't work on every platform the same. So just take note of that. For right now, we're going to keep this at BM normal, but we are going to change that uh, later on. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, draw the red channel, and I just want the red and blue channels to be offset a, a little bit. So I'm going to draw the sprite basically exactly as I did before using my draw sprite extended, and I'm going to do everything the same. I could just copy and paste it, but uh, a lot of times when you copy and paste, it's really easy to make mistakes, and it just it doesn't take that much more time just to type it out. So it's a, it's a good idea just to type everything out. So I'm just going to write sprite index for the sprite, image index for the sub image. And then instead of just drawing it on the x, y coordinate, I want to offset it a little bit. So I'm just going to put x plus 1, and I'm going to leave it at the y. I just want to offset it on the x axis. I'm going to leave the image x scale the same, image y scale the same, at the same image angle. And here I'm going to change the image blend to something else. So here's where we define what color we want on there. 
Uh, by default, it draws with white. So right here, we're going to actually draw it with red. So we want it to simulate our red channel. And we don't want it to be completely solid. So we're going to set the alpha to 0 0.2 so that it's semi-transparent and it gives a little bit of a glow effect. If you right click um, or if you go into the help menu, you'll see all of the built-in colors that are in there. C red is a built-in color and it'll show you what the value is on the side. There's very there's a few different built-in colors and you could also make your own colors um, if that's what you wanted if you wanted to have a specific color for now C red will work and instead of just putting in a, a hard number in here I'm going to create a new variable called the blur and this is how blurry I want the image to be how much the, I want the offset for the chromatic aberration to be and I'm gonna just create a local variable here and call that blur and set that equal to one um, I might want to adjust that later on and the reason I'm making a variable is so that I, I could just adjust this one number instead of having to go in there and, and change it wherever I want the blur to be so this way I just have one set variable it makes it very easy to play around with um, and now we're gonna draw our blue channel same thing sprite index image index and then here instead of X plus blur we're gonna subtract it so it'll be X minus blur so it'll be offset in the other direction so we'll have a red on one side and then blue on the other and then the rest is the same image Y scale image angle and instead of red, this time we're going to use blue. And the same R alpha is going to be semi-transparent. We're going to make sure we reset our blend mode there at the end. So we forgot to set our blend mode right here, and so we'll just change that really quick. I like to use BM add or BM max. And instead of having this code copying and pasting it on every single time we want to draw something, because we want to draw this chromatic aberration on everything. Um, we don't want to have to copy and paste it, this whole huge chunk of code, on every object. So instead, we're going to create a script. We're going to copy this whole thing, call it script chrome draw, and just paste in all of that code. So that'll make it easy. And whenever we want to draw a chromatic aberration, We'll just put this script in there. All we have to do now is in the draw event, uh, we'll just type in script or scr underscore chrome underscore draw. And we, you could call that whatever you want. At times I've just called it script draw or just even the word draw. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that at a draw event for my wall, add script chrome draw. Go into my object enemy and paste the script onto there. And now when I run the game, there should be a small little line on there. Now it's very difficult to see here um, because it's so small, the game is so small. But if you were to zoom in, you'd be able to see that one pixel off, there's a red line and then there's a blue line. Um, so because it's so hard to see, I'm just going to go ahead and change that blur variable that we created before. And we're going to change it to something a little bit higher. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the alpha for the regular, for our normal image. And I'm going to subtract it by 0 0.1. That way we could still change our image alpha normally, but whatever we change it to, it'll subtract 0 0.1 from it so that it's semi-transparent and uh, our red and blue channels will actually fill in a little bit of that transparency. Let's go ahead and run the game and see what that looks like. And now you can see a little bit more of that chromatic aberration. It's not absolutely perfect. You'll notice that when you tile things, there's going to be like a little blue haze sometimes. Um, but it is a really quick way of doing it a really quick and easy way of doing it so now I'm just gonna add a few more things since I'm already in here and I have a drawing script what I like to do is I like to add a little shake instead of adding a camera shake I'll do an object shake and this is the way that I do it um, I'm just gonna create a new variable called shake pow for shake power make that equal to shake which is going to be a variable I create 
inside of the create event, then I'll create another temporary variable called shake now, which is the shake that's going to be happening at every moment. And um and we'll have it equal to random range minus shake power and positive shake power so that it'll give us a number um between in between there and it'll give us a nice random range. Um And then what's going to happen is that in every frame, we'll reduce that shake power until it reaches zero. So that way we could easily just change the shake power um, in our code whenever we want. So now we're just going to subtract our shake value. Um, so if shake is greater than zero, shake minus equals 0 0.2. So that if we do have any shake power, then we're slowly making that shake, that tremble, uh, reduce every frame. And then we're going to clamp our shake so that it can't go over a certain power, so our shake doesn't get all crazy. Um, and we'll clamp that at a certain value. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add shake now to the X and the Y, so that whenever it shakes, um, it'll actually be adding a random number there to the X and Y value, creating that shake effect every frame. Um, the only thing about this is that we have to initiate our shake variable inside the create event. So whenever you create an object that's going to have this type of drawing, you're going to have to initiate the shake variable inside of the create event. And that's what I'm going to do now. Shake equals zero. And you could you could make this a different number if you want it to shake uh, right when it's created. That's that's also a cool little effect. And I'm going to do that on all the objects. And I'm just going to make it so that whenever our objects collide with each other, they'll add shake to the other object, sort of making this vibration effect. So if I just put with other shake plus equals two that should cause whatever object the other object that it's colliding with to have a little bit of a shake and I'm going to do that on all the objects and if we go ahead and run that and test it out you'll see that whenever it touches another object now we got this little shake on there and you could adjust that, uh, just play around with the numbers so you get a nice little shake whenever you want. Um, I just put it on everything so that you could actually see it. It's a little bit too powerful, but you could reduce that and make it look subtle and make it look nice. Um, all you got to do is play with those numbers. So there you go. It's a nice little juicy effect that you could add into any game. A simple little script, a few lines of code. I use this in game jams sometimes. And, and you know, you could just fiddle around with it and do whatever you want with that.